What are the designs for social futures? What kind of education are we all going to be part of? How are we going to deal with the blurring, blurring of the formal and informal learning? What role do each of us play? Do you play uh, as a bureaucrat or an educator or a student or a parent? We need to think very carefully about uh, the kinds of purposeful uh, decisions that we make uh, in order to address uh, the changed environment and also to prepare people uh, for a world of engagement which requires much more complex action from them. This means we ourselves have to be flexible, we have to be prepared to adjust, we have to be prepared to explore and we have to be prepared to test all of our uh, preconceived notions about how learning happens and even our own experiences. We need to be much more networked we certainly have to be collaborative, but most importantly, our focus can not only be on the process, it has to always be on learner performance and the things they produce, not just the things they can repeat to us. So we are all engaged in what we call designing of learning. Learning is not just a, a syllabus and a curricula, curriculum in some linear form, it's a much more complex, fix, flexible environment of design and co-design between teams of learners and teams of, of instructors. What are we going to do in this, in this kind of environment? The phrase that, that, um, that we've got here is designs for social futures. We as educators need to think about our roles in the context of the designs for social, uh, for social futures. So what are we gonna do? Um, one thing we can do is we can defend these increasingly anachronistic institutions. We can say, education's good, it's been done the way it has been for 150 years, we're gonna go back to basics. That's a, a frequent phrase. We're gonna go back to the basics. We're gonna drill the students. We're gonna make sure they get good marks. We're gonna keep the authority of the teacher in the form that it was. And all these for cherished forms which, we lived with as students, perhaps, we're going to maintain those because, you know, the way to deal with a scary future is to retreat to a, a safe past. Well, we can try to do that, but I don't think it's going to work for us. Um, so perhaps then could I suggest this, that the fluidities and the uncertainties of our times also offer us an opportunity. Um, and they also not just offer us an opportunity, but also they put on us a kind of a responsibility um, to not to be reactive, but to be leaders of change in this process. So as educators, we have a kind of a unique role. Um, we're, if you like, the intellectual profession. We think about the nature of knowledge. If we're a science teacher, we think about the nature of science. If we're an English teacher, we think about the nature of human communication and literary texts and the meaning of life. Um, so we're an unusually philosophical and intellectual profession. Um, and given the fact that we're in all this um, remarkable change, let's try and take a bit of an intellectual lead. Let's just try and think, okay, what do we do next? How do we respond to these changes in our practices? What do we actually do as teachers to transform our practices? And we wanna do that not just because we're being reactive to a world that's changing, us around, changing around us, but we wanna be designers of that world. We wanna build human relationships and knowledge ecologies which represent a certain set of ideals that we have as a profession, and we are gonna be active agents in that process. So what I'm saying is we as educators need to take a strategic stance if we're not simply to defend an anachronistic institution, if we're, if we're to try to move forward into the future as designers of that future, as opposed to people who are tossed around by change.